Panoorin po natin ang isang video presentation na ito. If you are a law-abiding citizen, if you are a God-fearing Filipino, you have absolute I will die for you. Kuya Roddy will be our champion, the big brother of all kapatids. Ang ambisyon po natin yung maliit, maging small, maging medium, at eventually maging large. Gusto po natin mag-level up sila. You know, the only way is really to empower everybody. Nandiyan ka for go negosyo at nandiyan ka because you want everybody to be included in the growth of our economy. Huwag lang nating pakialaman ang pera ng gobyerno. Maraming pera pa sa tao. Filipinos are not destined for poverty. We all can succeed. God place you there to do the things that must be done to help the Filipino. Magandang gabi po sa ating lahat. Upang magbigay po ng kanyang mensahe, nais ko pong tawagin ang Presidential Advisor for Entrepreneurship, Founding Trustee ng Go Negosyo at kasalukuyang President and CEO ng RFM Corporation, ang ama ng Go Negosyo, Mr. Joey Concepcion. Good evening. First of all, uh, I know all of you have, some of you have arrived here as early as 2 o'clock and uh, I know you're quite hungry and we will try to make this brief. But then again, uh, I'd like to thank uh, uh, for really allowing this event to happen despite his uh, very, <laughs> very busy schedule. Uh, of course, I'd like to also thank all of you kapatids here who have uh, helped this come to reality. Actually, it is not my arm twisting that really brought you here. I guess it is your passion, your love for this country, and I guess it's about time that the realization towards really inclusive growth really happens. Actually, this evening is a celebration towards inclusive growth. And Sulu is just one of the many. About three months ago, when the president asked Secretary Pinol to help Sulu, he uh, flew down and uh, met uh, uh, Sakur uh, and uh, his son, Governor Sakur. And uh, weeks after, Secretary Mani met me and it was just timing that we had the entire agri uh, sector of uh, entrepreneurs with us. And he called for help. And uh, I said, well, I think this is one way wherein our kapatids can really help bring back confidence to this province. As you all know, as entrepreneurs, when you lose confidence, that becomes more challenging. And I th believe that uh, despite the president's mandate to really bring peace to Sulu and his entire mili military force is there fighting the rebels, 
we should show to the citizens and of Sulu, of which Rosaline Dawi was born there, and in fact, the um, uh, grandparents of my wife started the school in Sulu. So I think Datu Sakur and his son and all these mayors, 15 of them here, deserve the applause for really having the courage. I know your province is challenged. Don't give up. And we are all behind you. Later on today, we will be uh, sharing the kind of support we have. Also, I'd like to commend, as we really bring about inclusive growth, I'd really like to commend our two secretaries here, Secretary Mon Lopez and Secretary Manny Pinon. This movement of Kapatid, Angat Lahat, it will not be possible without government working with us in this room. We will not be effective if we don't have good secretaries to really implement the programs. It is challenging, as we all know, as entrepreneurs, to really encourage many micro-entrepreneurs to succeed in life. We in this room comprise 0.4% of the entire business community, us large corporations. But 99.6% of them belong to the micro, small, and medium enterprise. Some of them are represented here today. The challenge is to make more of them join us people in this room. And that is really inclusive growth. One of the groups I would like to recognize today are our agri-entrepreneurs here in this room. Can I request them to stand? Our agri-entrepreneurs. There are much more than that. We just couldn't accommodate them in this room. But to me, Agri is the game changer. Without Agri, I don't think we will ever solve poverty in this country. And together with them, and together with the sectors like our retail chain owners, Tessie, Rubina, and many of you here who have started to buy from our farmers, Thank you. I think you deserve an applause. Pure Gold, all of these big chains. McDonald's is represented here. Uh, Jollibee and everybody in the food service is all in this room. This is what we want to create, real inclusive growth, by bringing the farmer, being able for him to sell his products directly to the supermarkets. And I'm glad our big chains have started to open the door to these farmers. Thank you. <laughs> Moving forward in 2017, I think we have a, a great president. His style may be a little bit different from what some of us expect, but I think his passion to serve this country, to really make a difference, to be a big game changer, is what we need. And Mr. President, you have the entire business community behind you today. <laughs> to our chambers here, PCCI, the Indian Chamber, the American Chamber, and so forth, George, we really have a big task ahead to really make our Philippine economy super great. And again, to all our kapatids, maraming salamat. Merry Christmas. Marami pong salamat, Presidential Advisor for Entrepreneurship, Mr. Joey Concepcion. Ngayon naman po ay ating pakinggan ang isang mensahe mula po sa mga proponents ng kapatid, DTI Secretary Ramon Lopez. Mr. President, uh, Madam 
uh, President uh, PGMA, uh, there are dis distinguished senators who are really entrepreneur advocates. Thank you very much uh, for being here. Um, our partners in, in government, the DTI family is here, Mr. President, the DA, as well as, uh, of course, ang bida for today, our business sector partners, our kapatid, uh, the, bar the various business groups who are gathered here to make a difference in the lives of others. It's like really a Christmas uh, is in the air. Christmas spirit is really just a few days, uh, or, or Christmas is just a few days from now. Um, and everybody would really just like to do something for others. And I guess that's the essence of being a true uh, Filipino. No? Uh, and the business groups here, a very strong, vibrant group, the agriculture uh, sector, uh, you will recognize. Um, Malaki na gagawa ng Viber Group talaga. <laughs> and of course, uh, you have constant communication with us, uh, with Joey, and uh, we thank you for the tremendous response uh, in, in uh, pushing forward uh, the kind of uh, assistance, cooperation, collaboration that all of us can do, especially when we are called to help a particular area, agriculture, and pushing for agriculture and uh, agri-industry development in Sulu. Jingai, congratulations for taking the lead also in our uh, project for Sulu. Uh, congratulations again, PA Joey, for again the, the leadership uh, in the business sector, gathering the various uh, business groups here. You're correct, you don't have to arm twist them. They are here because of the passion, really, to serve the country, doing their own share, make a difference in the lives of others. So, Mr. President, what we have here, what you see here, are the business sectors that are ready to help the country, ready to help your administration in really helping the country achieve tremendous growth, beating poverty. As you know, we are on the verge of a breakthrough. We all need the help of everyone. Walang ko contra, walang o opposition, because we only have one country. We really need to help the country. We don't have to shoot ourselves in the foot. No? And this is our chance. Uh, employment, unemployment has been down. GDP growth of 7.1 on third quarter. No? Tremendous growth in GDP. Even manufacturing has encountered big resurgence of 8.1% when it used to average only 3% in the past period. Tremendous growth, <laughs> Mr. President. And that's on the third quarter under your administration. Agriculture, also for the first time, encountered a positive growth in the third quarter. Congratulations, Secretary Manny Pinol. 3% growth after several quarters of negative growth. So we are here on a good momentum. Let's not break the momentum. And, and that's the reason why I guess we have a, a very good turnout today of just really wanting to be of help to the administration and pushing for growth for our Kababayans. No? Um, for the DTI alone, uh, we've established 400 negotiation centers around the country. We've assisted over 200,000 entrepreneurs just for the July to November alone, Mr. President. So that's under the current administration, 200,000. Conducting seminars every day in all the negotia centers, conducting mentoring efforts in all the uh, negotia centers. At the same time, in partnership with the Go Negotio and the PCCI, PFA, AFI, and so many groups here, the chambers, they're all helping out, providing mentors to the different parts, uh, entrepreneurs from different parts of the country under the Mentor Me program. Our uh, call for today to celebrate inclusive business is to provide a continuous market access for the products of many of our micro entrepreneurs, especially those from the agriculture sector. In DTI, we commit to mainstream the products of micro SMEs. <clears throat> the best of micro SME products. And we've had uh, the cooperation from SM, Robinson, uh, the Double Dragon Group, 
um, the Rustans Group, uh, uh, and even Pure Gold, and, and so many retailers, Mr. President, to allocate a specific space in their malls for free to mainstream and make available the products of all our micro SMEs. Maraming salamat po sa mga nag-commit sa inyo. Thank you. Um, yeah, I know you're not doing it for us, but you're doing it for our small entrepreneurs. And this time, the products of the agriculture sector na, that will be the output of our projects in Sulu uh, can be made available and mainstream in these uh, local, go local stores that we will put up in cooperation with the malls. So, palakpakan po natin ang lahat ng tumutulong sa atin dito. The project also that we have here, bringing inclusive business, making sure that the products, especially of the farmers, would land and would be bought and purchased by big companies is really an ideal model, having an inclusive business model, which is a model that can provide sustainable market for the agriculture sector, especially our poor farmers. So with that, we again thank our big brothers, or call it sisters for those gender sensitive. Palakpakan natin ang mga big brothers uh, partners, um, really ensuring that inclusive business will help uplift the lives of the small entrepreneurs. We're happy to note also that upon the initiative of our president, he has taken from his budget one billion pesos and transferred it to D through DTI, not to us alone, but through DTI, to be lent out to the micro entrepreneurs. One billion pesos <laughs> as a start. The vision and the promise of the president is to provide one billion per region. So to start off that program where he's allocating one billion to our project to help really the startups, the market vendors, uh, hawkers, small farmers, and uh, even from 5,000, 10,000, 30,000, up to 150,000, 200,000, we can accommodate through this micro fund. And we're happy to say that for the Sulu project, we are happy to allocate 50 million pesos for the uh, uh, Sulu farmers and all our projects that we will do for Sulu to jumpstart the economy in Sulu. So that will be our uh, little uh, contribution for a start. If we do well, we can do another 50 million for the area. And uh, with that, uh, so we call upon uh, everyone here to please just continue with your commitment to help the province of Sulu and also to help the small farmers, not only in Sulu, but around the country and be, you know, be a major force, be a game changer in this uh, noble project of uplifting the lives of all our kababayans. Maraming salamat po. And Merry Christmas. Marami pong salamat, Trade Secretary Lopez. Now to give us more insight into what negosyo para sa kapayapaan, para sa Sulu is all about, I would like to introduce to you all the man behind this project, no other than the champion of Philippine agriculture, Secretary Manny Pinyol. Mayor President, ladies and gentlemen, it was about 9 o'clock in the evening of uh, September 16. I was in uh, Borongan, Eastern Samar, for the uh, Biahing Bukid, when I received a call from Secretary Bong Go, who told me that the President wanted to talk to me. Of course, what followed next was the uh, cool but uh, authoritative voice of the man I have admired for so long. And he said, Man, uh, I'm with Governor Tan now. They have problems in Sulu. Can you please go to Sulu? What, what can I say? It was the president telling me. Yes, sir. September 16, September 19, I was in Sulu. September 20, we were back in Sambuanga. September 21 in the morning, I was meeting with Ramon Ang of San Miguel Corporation. 
September 29 evening, I was meeting with Joey Concepcion. That was three months and four days ago. Today, we're here. But let me tell you the story. When we took the two Huey helicopters from Zamboanga to Sulu, we flew over beautiful islands, blue waters. And I thought I saw schools of fish literally waving at us, asking us to catch them because they're dying of boredom. <laughs> I know it's an exaggeration, but this is how rich Sulu is. But they could not catch more fish because they don't have a cold storage. They have one, but since their power is provided by a diesel generator, it would be more expensive for them to operate the cold storage than the money they will er earn from uh, selling the fish. We went to the interior of Sulu, and right away, I knew what the president wanted. We have long talked about this even before he agreed to run for president. President Duterte has always told me in the past that arms alone will not win this war. There's got to be something else. And we both agreed that alongside the campaign against terrorism, against armed groups, there should be the soft hand that would provide comfort to people in distress. This is the basic concept of the Save Sulu project. In fact, when I presented this project to Joey Concepcion and his group, the title of the project was Adopt a Village Program. We wanted to invite private corporations to adopt one village at a time. As soon as the military clears one village, the private sector should come in, build sports facilities, learning centers, build water systems, provide basic infrastructure, maybe provide livelihood, build roads. This was the, bare, the, the, this was the basic concept of the Save to Loop project. But Joey is a miracle worker, and I have to give credit to Joey Concepcion for all of this. And of course, to this fearless, beautiful lady who traveled to Sulu twice or three times to complete the whole, uh, the whole job, Mr. President. Today, uh, I am happy uh, that all of you are here. And I hope that this would be the start of uh, the support of the private sector to the peace efforts. Government cannot win this war alone. You have to help us. Mr. President, reporting. <laughs> I'm ready to be dispatched to Lanao del Sur. Thank you very much. Marami pong salamat, Secretary Pinyol, sa isang makabuluang mensahe. Now, as we all know, inulunsad po kamakailan ng programang Kapatid Angat Lahat sa panguna po yan ng Go Negosyo in partnership with DTI at kasama na rin po ang Department of Agriculture. This project is all about involving the private sector in supplementing government efforts to establish peace and development in Sulu. At talaga namang pong maswerte tayo ngayong gabi dahil marami po tayong mga big brothers at sabi nga po kanina mga big sisters and Elaine enablers na willing pong tumulong. Ating pong alamin ano nga po ba ang mga commitments ng ating mga big brothers and sisters. Kasama po natin para alamin yan ang lead project coordinator ng Go Negosyo. Para for the Sulu Project, ladies and gentlemen, Ms. Gingayon Tiveros. Maraming salamat, Diane, and good evening once again, uh, kapatid, Go Negosyo family, Mr. President, uh, Honorable Secretaries, uh, uh, Madam uh, Gloria Macapagal Arroyo, President, um, and of course, our good friend, Governor Sakurtan. Um, I'm completely overwhelmed actually being here. Uh, it's actually my first time in Malacanang. I just wanted to say that, but more than that, you know, um, Gov Sakur and I and, and Gov Toto and my good friend Jainab from Sulu are always talking about how we can possibly come together, collaborate, and really try to help the province. And 
You know, paulit-ulit ho nilang sinasabi, Mr. President, that in all the years that Sulu has been uh, trying to survive desperate times, this is really the first time where they feel that there is one chance, one opportunity to really make a go of it and uh, magsukol. I wanted to say that. That's, well, my, the, the very few thousand words that I know, but... Uh, we really wanted to say thank you for you know bringing us all together under your leadership tonight so without further ado i'd really like to give credit to all the big brothers and sisters kapatids who have been pledging commitments to help uh, sulu province so i'd like to start off with the chairman of the mvp group of companies mr mani pangilinan Well, Mr. President, good evening. Madam President and our Congresswoman Gloria Macapagal Arroyo, Secretary Manny Pinol, Secretary Mon Lopez, Secretary Jess Teresa, uh, Governor of Sulu, and of course Joey Concepcion. Well, we've been a long time partner of Joey and Gon Negocio, so tonight we'd like to publicly express our support to the Negocio para sa Kapayapan sa Sulu with this initial four pledges. No? On telecoms, we plan to rehabilitate, upgrade, and expand the current 16 smart cell sites in Sulu. So that the people of Sulu can enjoy the full suite of digital services we're now rolling out nationwide. On housing, we've told Tony Melota here that we'll build at least 40 houses in the next uh, two years, and more houses thereafter. And Manila Water and Meralco will be there to provide the needed power and water services those communities require. Uh, we're also told on the coconut oil mill that we're told that Sulu can supply actually enough coconuts to build an integrated coconut processing mill of the capacity of anywhere between 150 to 200 tons per day. Uh, so this will involve an investment of anywhere between 600 to 800 million pesos. So we'd like to consider that. And, uh, finally, in the hospitals, uh, the biggest challenge we see in the hospital sector in Sulu are equipment and the lack of personnel, uh, nurses, technicians, and doctors who do not want to practice in Sulu for a number of reasons. So our hospitals would like to suggest and help out by supplying the relevant equipment, training medical practitioners in Sulu, in our own hospitals anywhere in the Philippines, grant scholarships and medical degrees to the residents of Sulu so that they can stay in Sulu. And uh, we pledge to you that our Zamboanga Hospital uh, can serve uh, any of the medical needs of the four hospitals in Sulu including the ability to transport uh, patients from Sulu to Zamboanga for complex medical procedures. That's it, Mr. President. Thank you. Marami pong salamat, Mr. Manny Pangalinan. I took note of everything you... You are committing, yes, tonight. Marami pong salamat. And uh, we also have here the Chinese Federation led by uh, some of the captains of industry. But I'd really like to give the floor now to Angel Ngu just to say a few words on behalf of the Federation as to the support that you will be giving for Sulu province. Okay, thank you. President Rodrigo Roa Duterte, Madam President Gloria Macapagal Arroyo, Secretary Mon Lopez, Gary Mani Pinol, Presidential Advisor Joy Concepcion, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, good evening. In behalf of the Federation of Filipino Chinese Chamber of Commerce and Industries, I'd like to express our full support to President Duterte. Poverty Alleviation Program for Sulu. Sulu has so much potential for businesses and tourism because of its very rich natural resources. However, over the years, the security situation there has hindered its growth and development. This concerns us Filipinos, and now we highly appreciate and recognize our beloved president's sincerity 
initiatives to bring lasting peace and progress to Sulu. When there is peace, there is stability. And when there is stability, businesses are created, giving our people jobs and the opportunity to rise out of poverty. On top of this, we also look at educating our youth as the best way to fight poverty and build peace. Basic skills such as reading, writing, numeracy has a positive effect in low-income population and in areas where there is conflict. Education gives our youth the ability to improve their life and their family's welfare. This is the inspiration for our flagship program, Operation Barrio School, since 1961. Our federation has been working with government to address the classroom shortage in our public schools. To date, we have already donated and turned over more than 5,100 school buildings equivalent to more than 10,200 classroom across the country. Of this, we have turned over 62 school buildings in the autonomous region in Muslim Mindanao. And six of these are in Holo and Patikul Sulu. Our federation commit to construct another 15 school building equivalent to 30 classroom in Sulu through our Operation Barrio School as our contribution to President Duterte Poverty Alleviation Program. The knowledge that Sulu's youth will learn inside this classroom will be their foundation to prepare them for a brighter future. Mr. President, our Federation fully support your vision for a better Philippines. We are your partner in building a prosperous and peaceful Sulu that will be the best legacy that we can pass down to our future generation. Thank you, and Merry Christmas to all of you. Merry Christmas din po, Angel, and thank you so much for the commitments from the Chinese Federation. I also need to mention, because Angel had already uh, discussed about the commitments in education, may I also acknowledge the support and donation of Congressman Artyap of Bohol, whose uh, paternal grandmother is uh, Tao Sug, and he will also be donating uh, school buildings for Sulu. So to proceed further, May I kindly ask Secretary Pinyol just for a few words about the commitments from Mr. Ramon Ang? Mr. President, uh, the last time I talked to Mr. Ramon Ang, he committed, I hope he will not be competing with Mr. Manny Pangilinan. <laughs> he committed to build a 50 megawatt coal-fired power plant. And uh, the superintendent of uh, the Haji Buto School of Arts and Trade is here, Mr. Tam Nandu. Are you around? Yes. Uh, I would like to inform you that Mr. Ramon Ang has committed to rebuild your school. <laughs> Sir, uh, Yung Pong Haji Buto School of Arts and Trade was where. Uh, National artist Abdul Mari Imao graduated. Yung po yung eskwelahan niya. And uh, Mr. President, I also would like to inform you that the Department of Agriculture through the Agricultural Training Institute will be partnering with the Haji Bhutto School of Arts and Trade. Uh, we will use one of their buildings as our training uh, center. At uh, magbibigay po kami ng, uh, through the DAF arm, limang traktora po uh, for Sulu. Uh, five farm tractors and uh, 50 million pesos for livelihood programs in Sulu. That is under our Saad program, Mr. President. Thank you, Paul. Thank you very much, Secretary Pinol, and of course to Mr. Ramon Ang and the San Miguel Group for all their commitments pledged. For Sulu, um, I'd also like to acknowledge the support being given by Mr. Lucia Tan and his son Michael Tan as well for the efforts in Sulu. Michael was one of the first Big Brother Kapatids that I was on, you know, messaging through Viber just to follow up uh, their pledges and commitments. And I do believe earlier 
can I say earlier <laughs> earlier tonight uh, we had uh, preliminary discussion so that they can start to study possibly the resumption of commercial flights to Holo, <laughs> which is critical if we are to make a go of business and investment to Sulu and from Sulu. So, marami pong salamat, Mr. Lucio Tan. And Michael, thank you for your support. You're, you know, really active. I can't say enough good words about um, this guy. Okay, moving on. We also have other kapatids who have pledged their support. And uh, briefly, I think Tita Rosalind, okay, she's Taosug as she explained earlier, but could you just say a few words about the things you're planning to do for the seaweed industry for Sulu? Uh, first of all, I would like to uh, thank Jingai for being so brave to go to Holo. <laughs> and uh, I was, she was uh, inviting me several times to go. I said, is there a plane going there? She said, no. I said, how did you go there? By hydrofoil. I said, I cannot. I'll, I'll be seasick if I use hydrofoil. So if there is a plane, uh, Mr. Lucio Tan, that will be going to Zamboanga, to Holo, I'll be the first to ride on that. <laughs> Ta talking about seaweed, thank you. Talking about seaweed, the only thing that I can do, we're, we're already buying seaweed in the Sulu area, but not much in Holo. If, if there are transportation going there, that's a problem now. We will be building uh, drying areas, and we'll be building uh, warehouses to put the seaweed, the dried seaweed there, so that it can be accumulated and bring to Zamboanga. I have, I have a factory in Zamboanga, it's easy to bring it, but right now it's difficult because there's no transportation. Thank you very much. Magsukol, Tita Rosalind, and mabuhay ang iyong karijinan industry for Sulu. Uh, moving on, there's another kapatid here. Okay, I found him. He's in the front row. Uh, Tennyson Chen was another kapatid that I was first uh, messaging uh, after a, a, you know, a uh, instruction also from Sir Joey about how he will be helping livelihood for our farmers in Sulu uh, for communities that have been deeply affected by war and unable really to make uh, a go of you know having regular income for their children, for their family. So Tennyson is one of our kapatids who will be supporting Kabuhayan for our farmers in Sulu. So Tennyson, uh, could you please tell us a bit about your program? Uh, uh, good evening, uh, Mr. President. Well, uh, we're from the poultry industry. Uh, currently, we, we grow our chicken all over the country. But uh, one of the places that uh, we don't have any chicken that we grow is in the Sulu province. Right now, we have a chook to go store there, but uh, we'll be opening more and more of these stores. The problem is all of the chicken has to come from Tambuanga. It has to you know, travel by boat every day. So I was suggesting to Jingai that you know it's good if we can start a contract poultry contract growing operation there, and we can bring feed either from Zamboanga or we can buy from our good friend San Miguel who's going to put up a feed mill. So um, hopefully um, over time that we can uh, help 50 or even 100 family uh, start a contract growing operation. Uh, we'll first bring in chicks and feeds from Zamboanga. But uh, as they gain experience, we would like that, you know, maybe uh, SM or Pure Gold or, you know, Robinson would eventually put up their own uh, convenience store there in, in pretty soon, right? <laughs> <laughs> okay, she promised. <laughs> so, uh, thank you. Uh, by the way, uh, we will also be donating uh, some of the equipment that these contract growers uh, will be using. These are the feeders and the, the drinkers. I'm pretty sure they don't have those equipment there. It's, you know, it's a simple thing, but you know, I think it's badly, badly needed by them. Thank you. Maraming maraming salamat, Tennyson. 
And uh, again, we mentioned Gawad Kalinga earlier. We have a lot of kapatids here in the, this room who have been supporting our call for commitments for houses. So we've raised money for 109 homes so far. And we have our partner here represented uh, by Tony Meloto and Luis for Gawad Kalinga. So just very quickly, Luis, could you just give us a few words? Thank you, Mr. President. Merry Christmas. Kami sa GK, wala na makaming pera, pawis lang. No, we have been working in Sulu for the past uh, close to nine years, I guess, with Jean and the local communities. And we discovered the treasure amongst the people there that they have this aspiration for peace. And it is with working with them that we realize that they told us that the more we sweat for peace, the less we will bleed in war. And to us, that was the greatest uh, gift that the people of Sulu has taught GK. And as we go to typhoon areas to build communities, uh, they have uh, taught us to really take courage to care. So we are all the way committed to the aspirations and dreams of uh, the people of Sulu. Maraming salamat po. Thank you so much, Luis, and we look forward to you know working with you very closely in the coming years so we can put up all the GK villages, which incidentally are not only villages with houses, but we plan to make it integrated communities that have uh, literacy programs, uh, which will be supported by Quintin Pastrana, another kapatid. And then I need to make mention also, as part of the inclusive growth uh, umbrella of uh, the Go, Nego Go Negosio organization, we will be integrating as well agri programs to be led by our mentors Mr. Toto Barcelona can I call you here for a while if you could just you know say a few words about the Kapatid Agri group that you've been putting together uh, thank you Gingay I'd like to see the president <laughs> it's the first time I'm going to see him in person <laughs> mayor <laughs> uh, good evening everybody uh, I'd like to give a background no, on this agri viber group uh, my arm was not twisted by, by Joey, but he inspired me a lot hmm? when he says that there's a lot of possibility in uh, the small farmers in uh, developing our economy. No? So among my friends, I sent messages through Viber, and in one day I got all responses, positive responses that they want to volunteer. <laughs> So I would like to present them. They're here. And we have uh, our two advisors, uh, Dr. William Dar and Dr. Joy Eusebio. And the, uh, the uh, Viber group, Agri group, uh, will you please stand up? All of them are accomplished. Uh, Agri entrepreneurs. Maybe they're not as big as our big brothers, but they're big in their own uh, rights. Hmm? So, uh, for Sulu, uh, during our board meeting with the Philippine seed industry, uh, they are well represented here. The biggest seed company, East West Seed Company, Dr. Acosta, and uh, the president of Allied Botanical, uh, Mike. Uh, uh, Cabalias, and then my son, uh, Julius Barcelona of Non You Seed Philippines, and yours truly from Harvest. So we have committed uh, in the Philippine seed industry to, uh, to uh, make ourselves available no? uh, because these seed companies are very deep into training farmers, sharing uh, agronomic technology, and specifically for Sulu, uh, we look forward into making Sulu um, food secured in terms of vegetables and short-term fruits. These are papaya, uh, melons, watermelon, and honeydew. Mm -hmm. So we hope that uh, the Department of Agriculture through uh, USEC uh, Evelyn Lavinia, she's very closely in touch with us regarding the funding no, for this training uh, program. And uh, Gingay has already told me that the Notre Dame School will be the site no, for the first training. And I'm still trying to convince my big boss, <laughs> uh, Tessie Coson, 
to bring also Kabalikat sa Kabuhayan training program, which is already a 10-year tra training program for small vegetable farmers all throughout the Philippines. So I hope tonight I'll get an answer. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you Mr. very President. much, Mr. Toto Barcelona, and of course, to all the big brothers and sisters and enablers. And also, thank you very much, Gingay Hontiveros. Now at this point, may I call or may we listen to the message of the emissary of the Royal Sultanate of Sulu and former three-term governor, Datu Shah Bandar Abdu Sakur Tan, for his official response. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh. Peace be upon us all. Mr. President, thank you very much for this affair this evening. This is the product of your genius. I remember one time I took the chance to see the President in Zamboanga. That was in August. And when I started talking to him, the president told me, we cannot talk about that for only a very short time. Let us have dinner one of these days. Let me see, he said, if we can schedule this after I get back from my foreign trip. He went to, he left for Vietnam and came back in, uh, that was early September. And actually, I really never thought, I mean, considering the business of the president, he would still remember that he would meet us over dinner, only to get a message from Mr. Bongo, Secretary Bongo, that we have a scheduled dinner with the president on the 15th of September. And we had that at the Bahay Pagbabago. We even asked the waiters there, who among the visitors of the president ever ate or had dinner in this hall? And we were told, you are the first and maybe you are the only one. Thank you, Mr. President. We talked to the President. I was with my son, together with my sister, head of the hospitals, some uh, mayors. Of course, uh, the President was uh, with uh, Secretary Bongo. And we told the President about the war in the South which started way back in the early 70s. Up to now, we are still fighting the same war. It brings back to mind, or it brings to my mind, a book that was given to me by President, former President Ramos, entitled Fighting Terrorism by Fighting Poverty. Poverty is indeed very high. The incidence of poverty in our province, in fact, it is one of the highest in the ARMM and the entire country. The rating is every three years. From 2009 to 2012, we were about 31% in terms of poverty incidents. From 2009 to uh, 2012 to 2015, it went up to 67%. This is way, way above the national average of 21%. So what constitutes poverty? We told the president that we need education for our people. Even the criminals would like to see their children go to school. Even the criminals would like to see the children to have medical attention, to have livelihood, to have homes, to have roofs over their heads, to have food on the tables. So. We have been saying that war alone can never solve this problem. We need to address the incidence of poverty in our area. We are now one of the highest. We are now next to Lanao del Sur in ARMM, 
in terms of poverty incidence. Now, I really never thought that this I mean, uh, whole thing would happen today. This is a lot of focus on our province, the province of Sulu, which has always been you know, misperceived as a war-torn area, as a kidnapped capital of the country. I would like to say that it is not so. Big business, actually, some of them started in Sulu. The Aboitis operated the power plant in uh, Sulu before I mean, uh, becoming I mean, uh, this big. I learned that even uh, MVP, Boss Pang uh, Mani Pangilinan, started doing copra business in Siasi Sulu. Mrs. Wei started his Karajinan business in Sulu. Sulu and Tawi-Tawi are two of the biggest suppliers of Karajinan or seaweeds in the entire country. We used to be one of the biggest, if not the biggest, supplier of Karajinan in the whole of Southeast Asia. Now, we believe that government alone cannot solve this problem. Government can only do so much. Government can provide support infrastructures. Again, before the elections in America, I read a book by Donald Trump and Robert Kiyosaki, The Midas Touch, which says that government can only provide so much. You want employment, you want labor, you want livelihood, you have to go to the captains of industry. You have to go to the entrepreneurs. And as I said, this is what is happening now. And I hope, you know, we just this gathering, putting all of this captain of industries, captains of industry together is something that would promote our province in terms of resources. Sulusi is the richest fishing ground throughout the world. We have the strongest fiber. Our abaca is the strongest fiber in the world. We have so much in terms of agriculture produce. We have a lot of mangosteens, except that we cannot prolong the uh, shelf life of our fruits. We have durians. Durians are growing wild in uh, our uh, province. And I believe our durians, uh, Mr. President, sir, I think our durians are the best. And we hope, I'm sure uh, the president has uh, tasted already our uh, durian. <laughs> Except that they do not last long, as long as the durians of Davao. Now with this, I would like to say thank you very much. Thank you very much for all of these I mean, pledges and commitment of yours. For our hospitals, our power, our educational system and water system and everything. I'm sure this will mean a lot. This will be remembered forever and ever. Again, Mr. President, natatandaan ko bago kayo sumakay sa inyong uh, chopper, ang sabi niyo sa akin, alam mo sa kur, dapat nasob na natin ang problema na to. Dahil ako lamang ang makakasolve ng problema to. Pag hindi ko pa nasolve ang problema na to, wala nang makakasolve nito. <laughs> ang sabi ko sa kanya bago umalis si 
Bagboard si Mr. President, si uh, President Sir. Sabi ko, Sir, pag hindi pa na-solve, ang problema na ito, Diyos lamang ang makakasolve na nito. Maraming salamat. Thank you very much to all of you. Wassalamu alaikum warahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh. Thank you very much, Datu Shah Bandar Abdul Sakur Tan. Now to introduce our distinguished speaker, let's call on Presidential Advisor Joey Concepcion. In my life, three people have inspired me basically to start the advocacy of Goni Gosho and many of you here in this room because of that inspiration. One of the people that inspired me to really get started 12 years ago was former President Gloria Macapagal Arroyo. Another person was a man who had really great passion in helping poor is Tony Meloto. And of course, the greatest inspiration came from my father, who is there, Jose Concepcion Jr. He started Ramfrill when we almost gave up hope that democracy was not going to come to reality. And Namfrel was the one that started to light that candle and give hope to a lot of Filipinos. And now I'm inspired by our new president. He's a game-changing president. President Rodrigo Duterte, Kuya Rodi, thank you for all what you've done for this country. And may we hear your Christmas message. Kindly I have a prepared speech here. <laughs> Two pages. But uh, this kind of uh, thing would not inspire me tonight if I do not give you my sentimento ko sa buhay. You know, I was studying and lived in a dormitory. And uh, every time we get our key from the Pigeon Hall, it looks at that statement it was in Chase there. I only passed through this world but once. Any good, therefore, that I can do or any kindness that I can show to my fellow creature, let me do it now. Let me not defer or neglect it, for I shall not thus pass this way again. Ngayon, ang, uh, hanggang ngayon, namimorize ko kasi araw-araw kami. <laughs> Every time you get the message, you go to the desk. So YMCA, just beside City Hall. And it's a great dorm. And uh, marami kami doon, halo-halo. 400 of us. So more or less, you begin to interact with a lot of people, uh, different religions, uh, and uh, different uh, tribes. Uh, so I... Maybe that was uh, why I started my politics, because I'm fond of just uh, getting to know you and making friends. Pero nung sa eleksyon, well, of course, I've been mayor of the city of Davao for 23 years. That is why I would more or less know about governance. Uh, but I hold it as an article of faith that no progress or development can come to a country or a city unless there is law and order. 
just after the revolution of Kore, there was already lawlessness in Mindanao and in Davao. And, uh, well, I, I, I thought that uh, maybe if I run, I could improve the situation of my city where I grew up. So, nung presidente ako, and I promised this, one, that there will be no corruption. And it, uh, if it is uh, there, then baka ginusto mo. You might want it. Two is that uh, I have to stop drugs in this country. Third is criminality. Because there are the three things that would really kill a nation. Fourth is uh, I leave to the economic managers, of course, just create the environment uh, where they can thrive peacefully and with the least intervention of government. As a matter of fact, ayaw kong makialam sa mga negosyo. For one thing or another, a lot of reasons, harassment, uh, um, that's why I said to the, this government, na kayong, those of you who are joining me, kindly be reminded of my words. So, a lot of things have happened uh, our way of late, and to think I'm not just about how many months in the office. I have fired almost 92 uh, people from the regulatory uh, bodies. I left the RB, and uh, I, we have a, an impasse with the people of the ERC, ERC because they have refused to step down. You know, ako yung government worker. I am in charge of protecting public interest. And how can I trust you when you are already there fixing the rates of the electricity that the people use? How can I be sure now that we are not sure change that the public is suffering actually because of these rates? I don't mind if it is really a finding that is factual and true. Wala akong problema dyan. But if I suspect that you are there on the take, you better resign. Hindi tayo baka kaintindihan dyan. Then harassment, the harassment, but I would withhold the money or request Congress to go dissolve uh, the regulatory board. Hindi ako pwede nang ganun kasi sa awa ng Diyos, Wala naman na akong pinipili. You know, if I was able to survive on a string budget and a public official for 40 years, well, we can survive with our salaries that are much bigger. Oh, about, I get about 30, 130,000. Pero kulang talaga because I have two families to support. <laughs> I, well, one is that I... I got an annulment from the first, my first wife. So, eh, ito, itong sila mayor, pati si, ano, itong isa naman, isa lang. Pero, man, talagang kulang. Kasi sabihin ko sa inyo ang totoo, ha? Makinig kayo. Ma'am, tumingin ka sa akin. Ayaw mo tumingin sa akin, eh. You know, kung magtanong ka kung maligaya ako, totohanan talaga ito. I'm, I'm talking I, 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 uh, live to eh, all throughout the country. <laughs> I never expected really to win. I was there for just the challenge of it. I, I was looking at the other candidates. Nobody was talking about Mindanao. The serious problem actually is Mindanao. Because if we don't handle it very carefully, this country will end up dismembered. Maniwala kayo sa akin. Kasi sinabi ko kayo sa court, you have to finish this. So good luck. Sabi ko sa court, pag nahulog itong helicopter na ito, tapos na ang lahat. Magkakaproblema na tayo. Well, because I said I was able to talk to Ms. Wari, although he's outside of the country, he's really making, taking stock of everything. Uh, 
okay, he's willing to talk to us. DMI, uh, we're having the first round uh, officially next year with the Sudoresa here, secretary in sa, sa peace process. At uh, I, I hope I said that before the year ends, uh, something concrete and positive will come out. And uh, ito ang gusto kong sabihin sa bayan. You have to heed us, to people, guys from Mindanao, because we're telling you the truth. You have to really transform this country. One of a unitary type, because there's so much control, it's like the imperial uh, throne because down the line to the last treasurer or to the last assessor comes from Malacanian or from the civil service or whoever you want to uh, uh, get to get appointed. Kailangan mo lahat na pati yung pera namin. And the fact is talagang it is not divided equally. Of course, we are not as prosperous as the other places of the Philippines, but still we're taxpayers and we're contributing a lot. Remember that 54%, lahat mga export, 54% of the total export earnings of this country comes from Indiana. So, pagkaganon, then every election, meron dito, a favored few, and they elect the president in, in this. They meet in one of four of them, five. So, mahirap yan. Because in the system, no fault of theirs, but uh, you, I mean, you decide because nandito lahat eh. And it cannot last long, not forever, I suppose. Maniwala kayo, kasi pang hindi, talagang there will never be and the end to violence there. Why? I'll tell you. What's the secret? How is it? How, how, how to understand it? Actually, this started. They are not playing rebels, just rebels because they just want to fight. Tatanong ka, ano yan sila? Bakit gustong patayan lahat? You know. And even the scholars of the Moro, this is actually a Moro nationalism. People of Mindanao, of the Muslim faith, are really called Moro. Ito sila ang nauna sa Mindanao. Because 100 years before Magellan landed in Leyte, bringing him the religion, Christianity, Sulu or Mindanao, were already converted to Islam ahead by 100 years. So when Magellan forced his way into the country and subdued us, they got uh, a nice place because they found in Mindanao, just like the Americans, that there was no typhoon. That fact of uh, being knowledgeable in the wind currents, alam na nila noon, kasi walang bagyo dito sa Mindanao. That is why the, the, when it was opened by the Americans, go to Mindanao because it is the land of promise. Actually, it was just a sloganeering. Before dito kasi ang Bureau of Lands, centuries ago, and the huge map of the Philippines was here. And they divided Mindanao, and I cannot blame them because there were no people at the time. Yung dito mga Tagalog ang nabigyan. Pare, mayroon, mayroon doon. We are trying to divide Mindanao. You might want a 24 hour, di ba 24 hour yung seven homestead. Those were pa sa pati yung Torrens title. Was introduced by the Americans. Now, early on, they wanted to develop the Americans, but they could not find the workers. Because the Moro would not want to work for the Americans or uh, Caucasians. And rightly so, the Moro really said that you are invading my country. And so they revolted against the Spaniards. The most that they could do was uh, really the Spaniards to 
build the or built the fourth pillar to stop the inroads of uh, the missionaries coming from Malaysia, Indonesia, going up to Mindanao. Yun ang nangyari. So they fought the Spaniards, they fought the Americans, and they are fighting us. Why? Because of this nationalism. Kanila itong Mindanao, pati sila. Walang Kristiyanos noon. Everybody, anak o ano ka, anak ka ng, uh, whether uh, the Muslim, the Moro of Davao is kal Kalagan, Kagan, Sama, Kuluhano, Tausog, Magindanao, Iranon. Those were the guys, they're all Muslims. So now, we are in a bind because here is the Philippines, here is Mindanao, the Christians, Lording it over the Muslim population, so I can lang, and even in my city, it's about 17. But we cannot really blame them. And so we have to ask for an arrangement we can, where we can live peacefully and live comfortably. So, how do we get it? You listen to them. Now, they say the barest minimum for Miswari Murad of the MILF and the rest. It's really federalism. Then, itong mga, mga violent uh, groups, the Maote and itong si mga Abu Sayyaf, will just have to talk. Or it, 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 uh, uh, it is really uh, a, a problem also of the leaders of the Moro, please. But at least we give them the hope. Importante yan eh. You give him hope. So that when, if we go to federalism, it's gonna be something like this. Ngayon kasi, okay, mayor, or president, yun, a mayor, governor, ito yung, these are the powers, one, two, three, four. Yung five, six, seven, wala dyan ang nakalagay. Those powers, residual, goes to the national, DILD. Ang federal, hindi, these are the powers of uh, the federal setup. President Tainana. Ang wala dyan goes down. That is uh, what you call devolution in its highest form. So may control sila. Oh, pagkaya naman niya. Lupa nila yan eh. So if they want to contract with somebody else, let the foreigners in as long as there's a safeguard on everything, taxes and all. Wala tayong problema. Ngayon they say that uh, Duterte is pushing for the federal, federalism because he wanted to stay in power beyond six years. Ladies and gentlemen, may I give you my word of honor. If they can craft, because they have to provide for a strong president because of the distribution of the islands. Delicado ka kung the parliament, just like the British, when it was first struck with the violent uh, yung double uh, double decker nila sumabog the you know, it's a consensual body eh, ang ano nila hindi pa malaman kung ano but you know it will be strong presidential like france you can have a parliament but uh, reserve some powers although very few to to call for an election to dissolve the parliament to be the chief uh, commander in chief of all the armed forces Ibigay mo lang yan sa President Lima, anim, pito. Ang lahat doon na sa baba. Ito ang mga pakialaman. In, let them enjoy the resources of their land. Much of this has been taken over by us. Ito yung mga Kristiyanos, mga negosyante. They own so much of the land, but they are marginalized and they are in two enclaves. There is a place, a barangay here, a barangay there. But we have to change that. Otherwise, if we do not go with the changing times, it will overtake us and nothing will happen to this country. Now, just to the question I said, of, uh, I am trying to figure out how to spell. <laughs> Me? If you can craft the federal type government next, next year, and submit it 
to the people for ratification, whether you really know. And if it gets to, if it passes the verdict of the people, I am going to step down. Next year, tapos yan lahat. Tapos na ako. I give you my word, my guarantee, that it will happen. Baba na ako. Para walang masabi yung tao na Duterte mo. Oh, if you do not believe me, uh, hindi ka talaga believe sa akin. Kasi, <laughs> kasi anuhin mo. <clears throat> Actually, pero kung magandang babae ka, hindi kita hintuan. <laughs> Ang hindi mo ako sagutin. Ma'am, pag hindi mo, patayin kita. <laughs> so, ganun. I leave you that message for me. It's actually immoral nationalism. Iyang yung mga abuso, they're as the fringes of a violent world. These are not really these are not really the activities, the core of the problem. The core of the problem is we have to have a balance here. The fact that they are, uh, they are willing to go federal means to say that they will accept us. That they will accept us. Uh, hindi ako kasi ako mistiso ako. Eh. Ay, uh, I'm half Chinese, half uh, ano ako. Maranaw ang lula ko. But uh, I'm Bisayan yung tatay ko. Cebu. Pero I'm, I'm giving you, uh, it's not uh, ambition. Wala akong ambition. Really, if you ask me, sabihin ko nga, may I pour out, kaya ko sentimento. You think that you see, you see me happy, that, are you happy? Ayan si Merlo. She was with me for the last 30 years. Sayang sa trade na ba? Ambisyoso ako, sabi ko na, am I happy with this? I will answer you this. Hindi ko kailangan ang trabaho na ito. Hin I will repeat, hindi ko kailangan ang trabaho na ito. So that you fix a, a new constitution, a new setup, make the Romoro happy. And if it's just a question of the people uh, making a, a doubt or uh, because I am there, they are all gone. On the third year, that would be half of my term of six years, I'll step down. Inyo na. Usino yung presidente. Walang, walang problema yan. Nasa drugs. No, it's an, ele it's an election promise. Aside from my experience as 40 years as a congressman, vice mayor, mayor ng Davao City. Alam mo, fiscal ako, that makes up the 40, 40 years in government service. Fiscal ako. Alam ko ang takbo, whether it's really on trial. Mabili mo eh. You can buy the policeman. Some are corrupt to the core. Prosecutors, judges, and even the prison facility. You can operate your shabu operation inside despite na may wrong dilagang jammer. So, nandiyan ka na sa loob ng prisuhan, then you are still fucking us. Putang ina. Saan yung? Ito marami rin ito pero marami itong Ito ang nagdadala. Maraming pag-ibig to. Mm -hmm. Look at it. General Loot. Statement of assets and liabilities. 100 million. Kasi matyaga daw sa negosyante. Ang ulol, baka kun pa. May mag... You know, ladies and gentlemen, 
This is the drug industry of the Philippines. Ano mga pangalan? Nandito, police, prosecutor, barangay captains, marami, about 2,000 plus. They have contaminated the government for so long a time. We just did not realize it. Hindi natin alam eh. Sus Mario Josep. Elected public official. Okay, ito, babae ang pangalan nito eh. Pero ito. Barangay Captain, Barangay Captain, Barangay Captain, Barangay Captain, Barangay Captain, Barangay... So, huli ko na ito sa iyo. Mag-init lang ang ulo ko. Salamat, ha? Eat ko yan. Tiga bagyo yan. Masaya marami magsabi, maganda lagi yung aid mo. Huwag ko gago. Hindi ako nang ano nang subordinate ko. I don't, that's not my, that's my, that's not my habit. Ito ngayon ang human rights. Not perfectly all right to criticize me. The first survey during the time of General Santiago, Pedia, pegged it at three million. During my time, I'm still counting. Hindi ko pa na-release because I'm hitting the 900,000 mark. I know that I will breach that number before the year ends to another one million. So dito muna tayo sa three million. Nandiyan na yan. Itong 100, itong 1,000. Sabi ko, when I became president, you stop it or I'll kill you. Do not destroy my country. Do not destroy the young. Because you will deprive us of a generation of Filipinos. You do that, I will kill you. Here comes now the human rights. Eh, maraming patay. Actually, surprise of all surprises, we did not begin to operate until after I was at two months in the office. If you will try to recall, weeks before I assumed the office, there were already many killings, and right after I was elected. And yet, We were not about to start anything. Sabi ko, pag-aralan natin ang terrain. Because sa Davao, alam ko, it was serious. But I never thought na nung ako na when I started to squeeze the everybody, to my horror, hundreds of thousands of Filipinos were lining Barangay Hall sa police mag-surrender. And it has reached the 900 million. If you are a president of a country with four million shabu addicts, and to think that if you are into that practice, it was the worst to me that study that said that shabu user for over a year would shrink his brain and he is permanently destroyed. No hope of rehabilitation. So how many of these four million now are really totally disabled? And how many are still maybe sane enough to, to be cured? Kaya ako, nagwawala. That is why there's a rage inside me. Can you possibly do it? By what? right do you have in this universe to destroy a, my daughter or my son 
No, wala naman akong ginawa sa iyo. Especially those working in the Middle East, working their ass to death. Yung isa na sa Qatar ang asawa, yung asawa niya sa Saudi. They keep on sending money, working to no end, only to find out that the son has been contaminated with Shabu and the daughter is also an addict. So, paano yan? Where, where is, forget about the loss. By what right do you have to do that? Anong kasalanan ng nanay pati tatay na gawain mo sa isang anak nila? Kaya ako, kung ako ang tatay, anak ng, anak ng putang ina, papatayin talaga kita. Honestly. Eh, tataw. Sos. O, paano yan? Tapos itong human rights. Well, it is good. What I said, they were all, already crying when it was not our job to do it because I said, not now, we have to study the terrain. And we have this Udikta. We're uh, holding the sway Western Visayas. Uh, the Magasawa, both husband and wife were shut down in, in, in the pier. And we keep on coming, but human rights, human rights. I said, you know, I did not have the money. I, I, I entered midterm. Wala akong pera. So I, I, I just stood there swallowing the mga takot nila, Duterte, and came these uh, foreigners. You know, Mr. Duterte will uh, hail you to the International Criminal Court. See, I'm about to raise the finger, about to give the dirty finger to you. You do not know. Human rights genocide is for the race or religion or a class of persons. You dumb idiots, the law does not refer or whatever that law is. It does not refer to criminals. Come on, man, shut up. Akala ko pa mag-graduate ka ng Oxford, mga Cambridge, mga Harvard. Tala-tala pala kayo eh. Mabuti pa ako dito, loka lang. Come on, if it is not. If it is not a crime in my country to say, if you destroy my country, I will kill you, if it is not a crime to state bluntly to you, do not deprive us of the young of the next generation. It is not a crime to say that. Who are you, stupid fool, to say that to me? That this uh, mayor has been heard openly to kill criminals. I got shut up. Yeah, do your worst. Walang pakialam sa inyo. And this rapporteur, we threatening to come here. Oh, come. And said, uh, she wants a one-on-one -on -one meeting. Oh, no. You do it in public. I will do it in public. I'll tell you where your garbage comes from. Yung babae, come. Then uh, I'll place a table there, small table, and face to face. Let the Filipino Hear it. If it is a crime, we see. Tanong ko lang naman sa kanya, well, you came here with facts? Factual or are you here to confront me with the garbage? I will just simply say, who was my 50th victim? What is or her name? And old, how old was she? And where did this happen? So, <laughs> 5,000. So yung ika-5,000, sino yun? Anong pangalan niya? Gaga ka pala. <laughs> And ako, I tend to be, you know, I, I'm basta, you know, pinikon mo ako. I mean, I mean to use that kind of, uh, I come from a 
level of civilization na hindi naman masyadong ano. Eh, provinsyano lang ako eh. Diyos ka nga, I just came from my province, though I'm part of the establishment because of being a lawyer, but I came out, from, I came in from the cold. I was not the one, pareho na itong mga kilala lahat. And yet, I won. So said, I said, what is this? I asked my wife. There is something there that, you know, you, you got a four million. Ulitin ko, dalawa lang presidente ko. Si Amy Marcos, but a lady from the, uh, Mindanao. And she supported me, and I won in the province by almost 100,000. And only because she was once upon a time the love of my life. Pero hindi ko alam itong life chapter chapter pala to. Hindi talaga life na totoo. That's what I'm saying. God must have. So that's it. It will continue on criminality. Itong mga kidnappers dito sa Malacanian, because uh, Shabu is on, maybe, the, on the way down, it's uh, uh, sl slowing down a bit. Yung iba are back into the business of kidnapping, mostly Chinese. And what is really very despicable is uh, kingian nila ng ransom pagkatapos patayin pa nila. And you think that I'm happy? So, basta, you know, you do your thing, I do my thing. If we meet in one corner, pasensya. Ganun ang Pilipino. No, I'm trying, kasi hindi, I'm really, I, I'm serious as can I can ever be. Tayong mga foreigners dyan, no? You are better off going to the communities, telling them, stop it, because you, you lose your, not only your pants, but your life. Ang akin is, you want the killing, stop, or tell the Shabu producers and runners, stop Shabu, and there will be peace in the land. You continue with Shabu, I will not. Until the last pusher, I said, is out of the streets. Until the last drug lord is killed. It will last till the end of my term of six years. If we get to resign or step down, or if I'm assassinated, go ahead. I'll stand impeached, go ahead. As long as the people would know that I give up the presidency, not because of corruption, because I was desperate in trying to help my country preserve its condition. <laughs> Simple as that. I have no, I have no <laughs> plans of mine. Per personal, Lana. If you ask me if I'm happy, extra happy to be present, I'll answer you. I do not need it. And so for the businessman, all you have to do is to assert. If your son of a bitch will tell you demanding money, sampalin mo. And make an appointment with me to bongo. And I will take care of them. Whoever it is, I fired the other day two commissioners of uh, the immigration. And to tell you, they were my fraternity brothers. Honestly, Sipain ko yan sa harap mo. <laughs> then I will demand for his resignation. Pag hindi, I will treat you as a drug pusher also. <laughs> Pato to. Ganun na lang kasi ganun man talagang style ko rin sa Davao. You know Davao is hitting nine. The highest growth in the Philippines. Nine. Why? 
Well, because the above is baseball. It bloomed, flowered into something really big. There's a shrine there, it's a, a mountain actually. Then if you are there, the middle, you can look at the your right side, and that would be something like the west and the east, dito, kita mo development and dabo. So everybody is happy, and there is no, uh, there, there's enough job there. You cannot find any more, you know, because a plumber has to be a plumber. He cannot be a carpenter. The carpenter can do this, the carpentry works. Most of our uh, skilled marine. You know what uh, they say when I go there? Me or I just hoping and praying that someday, if you can fix our country, that we can go home and work there and be with our children. Every time I hear those words, I, every time I take off a Kogaling, Laos, Vietnam, I know I, I, I were it not for the, so many guys there, sa aeroplano, gusto kong umiyak. Gusto kong umiyak, makikita ko, back home I have to face the problem of law and order. Drugs, Abu Sayyaf, and Maute. And they were trying to mount a revolution there. And I said, be careful because uh, if they lose the landmass, the Aleppo or the Mosul, and their desired proclamation of a caliphate, uh, that would be Malaysia, Indonesia, and the Philippines, and Brunei, then there's going to be real trouble for this country. I hope it would not reach that, but uh, ISIS is a very dangerous. ISIS, I cannot, I'm of mixed blood, but I cannot condone their barbaric. You know, you know, if you have to kill a person, you don't have to do that. You should be inspired by the song Mona Lisa. They just lie there and they die there. No need for you to make an exhibit about cutting the head of a poor guy. So that, my friends, are actually my... Thank you for listening to my outpouring of uh, what... <laughs> and were it not for uh, a very receptive... Uh, uh, from the heart. If do you do not agree with me, fine. I will not take it against you. But do not engage me in something like a question of law. I should know what I'm doing. I never declared, I said, I never declared police punitive action. Right on start, I says, I'm going to wage a war. Because the casualty now is four million. Do I need another year and be afraid of human rights and all of these things? And you are uh, isang ito pang gago na mamatay? Assuming na ano, pinatay. Sabi ko, assuming it to be true. But I said I believe in the version of the police because the police is under me. And the Justice Department is also under me. If I really wanted to cover up, all I have to do is to say to the agents of the NBI, which is under the Justice Department, to just follow the theory of the police. Because they are all theories, no direct witnesses. But I, never, I, said, I said, allow, file the case. But I will not. I will not. For the, for, if, it, if it is really proven to me after that investigation report, I, I wait to read it that they followed my orders, go out, arrest them, but if they do not surrender and they present a violent resistance, putting in jeopardy the life of the lawman, shoot the idiot. That is my order. And if you get charged in court, tell the judge, I will appear there. It is my sole singular criminal responsibility, not theirs. They're just following orders. If it's really considered a crime, say, you, I destroy you, then, then go ahead. 
but it is not in the revised penal code or nowhere in the books uh, penal in, uh, statutes of ours. So I said, uh, Republic of the Philippines, go for the federal type, maybe a not so broad one. You know, the United States were here. They were Lord, the Lord did it over for 50 years and lived up with the fat of the land. But they, when they went, they went out, it, it, still, it was still a unitary type. And to hear them say, we will cut your aid. If, you, if this thing happens again, go on, guys. Shut up. Shut up. I do, I do not need your assistance. Challenge, uh, millennium challenge? 400 million? China is going to release to me 15 billion. Go home. <laughs> I do not need your aid. You know, you should be careful with Orientals. They just don't know how to treat themselves. When you tie the, when there is a, you say, we will not give you because of this. You are pictured, it's a Visayan idiom. I don't know if you can understand. Patay gutom. Patay gutom is, uh, you, you're dead because you're hungry. We don't care if you are dead because you're of oh, starvation. It's actually a slur. Do not, when you are dealing with Asians, uh, with due respect to the ambassador of the United States, you're dealing with Asians, be careful of your language. You cannot do that to the Japanese and to the Koreans and to them. They'll feel insulted. Why, why, why do you have to say, we'll cut your radio? Just say outright, please stop. Or this. We are members of the United Nations, correct? Okay. You guys put your uh, complaint there for the violations of the lost souls. Then whatever happens there, the Human Rights Commission shall conduct a investigation. Then if there is a finding, they go ahead and present it to the plenary, and then they can come to me and say, confront me for this. Case. But just to say you come here to investigate me, want to talk to me, no. I, my transaction, I do not want dealings here. Uh, I do not want to talk about business. There's the undersecretary of trade, the secretary of trade, you go to them. Now I have to review the papers uh, every, uh, most every day. I, 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 it's actually, at the end of the day, I would say to you, it is dignity. Just because there are human rights violations, you do not say that you will never have the AIDS. We do not need it. But, but why do you say it? Mr. Duterte, if this thing continues, you lost the, the, your assistance. It is actually an insult, Slur. So I hope that we can understand each other here, and you guys. And there will, never will, be, there will never be a time that I will allow government people to go into your pockets. That's why I ordered the arrest of Jack Lam. I really do not know what was the case against him, but he was talking as if he was, everybody in government was in his pocket. And so I called, arrest him. For what? Uh, for whatever. <laughs> Good that he was able to fly out. Or that he will rat in jail. And I said, but there is no charge, no, uh, never mind. You arrest him. Good. And, uh, May I say also, uh, sorry for my, my bad words. Uh, I was not disciplined enough by my father and mother. <laughs> but uh, con do not consider me, I, I realize it. Let us not kid each other. I am a worker of government. I never said a word about me as president. Never. You have never heard me say, well, as president, I would say, as a worker of this government. 
But when I'm elected as president, I have to do this because I have to protect the Filipino. I have to preserve the country. It's actually a self-preservation thing. It does not need any constitution to say to protect your people. Maraming salamat po. Thank you very much, Mr. President. Now may we request you please to grant the photo opportunity. Mari lamang pong sundin natin ang pagkakasunod-sunod. First batch, principal sponsors and government officials. We request others please to take your seats. First, we call on the first batch, principal sponsors and government officials. Again, please take your seats while we have the photo opportunity for the principal sponsors and government officials. Ladies and gentlemen, you will see at the behind your IDs the group that you'll be joining for the photo. So again, please look behind your IDs. So we will be in chronological order. So this is group one. Please just wait for your turn for the photos. The batch number, number is indicated at the back of your IDs. Two will be salute delegates. Kindly get ready. Marami pong salamat sa lahat ng ating mga kapatid na dumalo. Today we have lived up to the true meaning of Christmas. Talaga nga namang magtatagumpay ang proyekto sa Sulu dahil po sa inyong mga tulong. Tandaan walang maliit o malaki sa ating lahat dahil kapatid ang at lahat. Batch, please salute delegates. Get ready, batch number three, go negotio batch three. Can we have the batch three? Go negosho, batch three. Thank you very much. Next, we'll have the next batch. Go negosho, batch three. Batch three, can we move on to the next batch? Go negotio batch four. Go negotio batch three. Kindly get ready, go negotio batch four.
Thank you, Go Negosho Batch 3. We move on to the fourth batch, Go Negosho Batch 4. Again, thank you, Go Negosho Batch 3. Next batch, batch five, Agri Kapatid Group. to remind after your photo op kindly go back to your respective seats thank you thank you very much batch four we move on to batch five agri kapatid group again thank you very much batch four go negotiate batch four after the photo op you may return to your respective seats thank you Philippine Franchising Association, Association of Filipino Franchisers Incorporated, and Go Negosho Angelpreneurs. Again, we may, may we now have Batch 5, Agri Kapatid Group. Thank you, Batch 4. You may return to your seats. We now have Batch 5, Agri Kapatid Group. Kindly prepare Batch 6. return to your seats after the photo opportunity. Thank you, Batch 5 Agri Kapatid Group. Now we move on to Batch 6 Philippine Franchising Association, Association of Filipino Franchisers Incorporated and Go Negosho Angelpreneurs. Thank you, Batch 5. You may return now to your seats. Batch 5. After the photo op, you may now return to your seats. Batch 5. Kindly return to your seats, please. Thank you. Batch 6, 
Philippine Franchising Association, Association of Filipino Franchisers Incorporated, and Go Negosyo Angelpreneurs. May we request all the other guests to kindly take your seats? Thank you. Again, requesting all our other guests to kindly take your respective seats. CCI, Foreign Embassies and Chambers. Again, thank you, Batch 6. After the photo ops, may we request you please to kindly go back to your respective seats. May we now have Batch 7. PCCI Foreign Embassies and Chambers. Thank you again, Batch 6. We move on to Batch 7, PCCI Foreign Embassies and Chambers. Again, we will request our guests to kindly return to your respective seats after the photo ops. May we request you to kindly return to your seats after the photo op. May we now have batch A, Go Negosyo batch 2. Again, thank you very much, batch 7, PCCI, Foreign Embassies and Chambers. Kindly return to your seats after the photo ops. We move on to batch 8, Go Negosyo batch 2. <laughs> 